Uh, turning now to Mr. Brock, you have the floor for six minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. And uh, good afternoon, Ms. Daly. Thank you for your attendance. Very disturbing evidence. I would use that term numerous times to, to describe what you just shared uh, with committee. You used terms such as um, speaking out, you were stymied, you were prevented from doing so, you were muzzled by senior management, political appointees, you were intimidated, you're frightened, you're scared, you're concerned about your job. This is the making of a Hollywood movie, but this is reality. This is Canada's professional public service and the government of Canada conducting themselves in a fashion to intimidate other public employees who do, do not tow the, the narrative. And I think that narrative that they're trying to describe is they're trying to distance themselves from GC strategies, trying to distance themselves from Christian Firth. We've had numerous meetings for the past year. We've heard from cabinet ministers who deny any and all responsibility. We've heard from the president of the CBSA, likewise, as well as the deputy minister for PSPC and other senior managers, all distancing themselves and laying all the blame on two individuals, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Utano. Is that your impression as well? I never saw Mr. McDonald or Mr. Utano do anything nefarious. I would question, the question is, it. the question is, is it your impression from being within the CBSA and the PSPC? No, it's not my impression. That these officials are trying to distance themselves? I would say that's accurate. You would say that's accurate. Who are these, pe who are these people, in your opinion? Who are these officials? Who are the, who are the senior managers and the political appointees? Name them, I, please. You know I'm going to, likely, these are the people that are likely going to get me fired, right? Yes, but you're compelled to answer, Ms. Daly, as difficult as it is. Okay. Uh, the, I have uh, proof, evidence, both email and audio, to demonstrate that I've been intimidated by my former director general. Who's that? Lisanne Bolduc. Lisanne Bolduc. B O L D U C. What was her position? Director general. For what? Real property contracting. Which department? Which ministry? Public Works. Public Works. Okay. Who else? Um, she and my senior director met, uh, made me come to a meeting. Who's on your senior director? My apologies. Tom von Schoenberg. Okay. Um, at that meeting, and I've got a transcript of the audio, if you would like me to quote one of the lines she stated. Who, was, it re was it recorded uh, on consent? It was recorded because I felt I was being harassed and intimidated. Do you still have that recording? I do. And you'll supply that recording to this committee? I will. Thank you. Go on. Would it be okay if I cite one of the quotes from that meeting? Certainly. Okay, well, CBSA did contact us at the highest level of the department because their investigation is legitimate. And so it came down to us in terms of what we need to do as the procurement department in response to that. But I'm talking about you personally receiving threats of any nature, not in the context of normal business, which, like the CBSA did in reaching out to CBSA to PSPC, is normal, and is expected in the context of their normal business. I'm talking to you about feeling threatened outside normal requests that would be related to your work. That was one of the three quotes I have got cited on the tape about senior officials. Okay, and this was a taped conversation between yourself and Lisanne Lisanne, Lisanne Bulduc and Tom von Schoenberg on oh. December the 15th. Okay, what other senior managers, what other political appointees do you reference as being muzzled that you reference that prevented you from speaking the truth? I want names and I want uh, positions and departments, please. So let me just ask the question. You're asking me to say who is preventing me from speaking the truth? Yes. Well, as far as Lee Zambulduk, it was my deputy minister. And Riza. who is that? Ariane Riza. Ariane? Riza. Riza. Can you give me an example? Um, I just could tell you what my director general said to me. 
As so you know, Diane, the matter is up to our deputy minister and their deputy minister. And the direction that I'm getting as a civil servant, and as you know, this is how it goes down, this is not an option. This is what we have to do. And that deputy minister, Ms. Riza, obviously answers to the minister. She the cabinet does. minister of she the does. government of Canada. She does. Right. Okay. Is it your impression that cabinet ministers were aware of the intense pressure and intimidation that you felt to participate in this process? I am going to refer back to one of the committee hearings that I've reviewed uh, from the deputy minister, and she clearly states in that that she didn't inform the minister until November. And I know the minister on November 28th took responsibility, well, what he knew of responsibility in the press. Who's that minister? Minister Duclos. And I believe he has tried to do the right thing. But he wouldn't have known what was going on until at least the fall of 2023, because that's what Ms. Riza made comments to in her appearance before either OGO or and public your, accounts. And your opinion, Th thank you very do you much, anything Mr. to rectify Thank that. you very much, Mr. Brock. That is your time.